is this is where we keep all our specimens. So a variety of different types, we've got um, spirit specimens and we've also got preserved specimens that have been prepared by taxidermists and also our conservation department. But um, it really is fantastic to kind of get an idea of the size of some of the animals that you see because um, I mean here for instance I'm, I'm kind of, this is a sea lion prepared and um, it, we've even got kind of a, a walrus here and, and when you see them you actually get an idea of the size of them. Some of these walruses, they're huge things. But um, one of the things I wanted to show you really was some of our stoat specimens because we've got a real passion and interest for mustelids and stoats and weasels in particular and um, I just thought it'd be interesting really because a lot of people ask me what's the difference between a stoat and a weasel and they are quite similar in a lot of ways uh, but I just wanted to show you these because um, weasels and stoats kind of differ really um, size wise. This is a stoat and you can see here um, the shape of it, long animals, um, kind of quite ferret looking but they're amazing to see these, they kind of bound when they're running, a bit like a squirrel so you often see them on the top of stone walls. Fantastic predators, um, you can take out hair no problem feed on large rabbits. Um, by comparison, here we have a stoat, um, sorry a weasel, and uh, weasels are very very similar in shape but obviously a lot smaller and that's a full size weasel, almost like the size of kind of two mice put together. And uh, they feed mainly on mice, they feed on voles and, and also on shrews. But um, unfortunately one of the problems that these animals get, they only live for a very short time in the wild, in captivity they can live for about 10 years but in the wild they get a little nematode that they get from their actual prey so from the shrews that they feed on they actually get this tiny little nematode worm that kills them in the end and they feed on the shrews and it kind of this, this, this worm goes in through the nasal passages and eats away at the brain, it's absolutely horrible really when you think about it but it's, the, these things form little balls in the brain they're eating away there and some of these weasels and stoats, um, people see them in the wild and they see them kind of dancing around and jumping around and flipping over and they often think that it's the dancing that you know they're having fun but in, in reality it's probably this nematode worm that's eating away at the brain but it really is invasive and it's actually responsible for about 90% of weasel deaths um, in the UK. Um, it doesn't affect stoats quite as badly, it's probably about 20% of the stoats are affected by this particular, this particular worm. Uh, but I'll just show you because it actually, when you find a dead stoat or weasel, um, and you look at its brain, and, uh, and I'd just like to show you the difference here. So I've got, I've got a couple of different skulls here. This one's the stoat skull and this one's the weasel skull. But if you look closely, you can actually see the holes that this particular worm and this nematode, this horrible nematode, has actually made, it's eaten through the brain, it's actually eaten part of the skull. And you can actually see the two the little holes there, in this tiny little weasel skull, where the worms have eaten away at the skull. 